In this experiment, we're going to be determining the ability of aluminum to shield or block beta rays given off by strontium-90. We are going to be using a small disk of strontium-90. Probably can't read it from there, so I'm going to read it to you. Uh, it contains uh, 0.1 microcurie of strontium-90 when it was manufactured in August of 2018. It is now March of 2020, so it has degraded a little bit, but considering the strontium-90 has a 28.8 year half-life, it has not uh, degraded substantially. Uh, I'm going to put that in our sample holder. Uh, we are going to be using uh, aluminum foil inside of little uh, film holders from slide materials back when the uh, pictures were taken on slide film. And inside these different uh, pieces, we have differing numbers of thicknesses of aluminum foil. And in the upper right hand corner, we have designated the number of pieces of aluminum foil that is sandwiched in between each one. And we will take turns inserting them between the source and the detector. Sometimes we'll have to put multiple stacks in there in order to get the correct number of pieces of aluminum foil between the source and the detector. All right, so, uh, I'm going to start by turning on our detector and uh, our first part of the experiment calls for having two pieces of aluminum foil between the source and the detector. So I'm going to start by resetting when I change the conditions. You can see right now there's a lot of activity being detected. Lights flashing pretty quickly and you can hear a lot of noise from our Geiger counter. Our first reading is 2,548 counts per minute or 2,548 disintegrations uh, per minute from our strontium-90, which is our beta emitter. We're going to take two live readings during this experiment, and then I have taken some uh, readings beforehand, which I will share with you, because we're going to want to get at least five readings per condition, per the number of sheets that we have between our source and our detector. So right now we have two sheets of aluminum foil between our source strontium-90 and our detector. And since the readings will vary substantially. We want to get at least five readings to average. All right, so there's our second reading of 2570. So the three readings that I got beforehand are here. All right, 2483, 2571, and 2574, which you can write down. So our next condition that we want to look at is what if we put five sheets of aluminum foil. I'm going to reset it once I get that in there. All right. So with two sheets of aluminum foil, each at 0 0.03 millimeters of thickness each, our readings were 2548, 2570, 
74. So now we're on to looking at five sheets of aluminum foil between the source strontium 90 disc and our detector. our first reading here in just a moment. There it is. Uh, so we have 2172 for our first reading. I'm going to get one more live reading before I share the previous readings that I got with you. All right, 2160 is our second reading. All right, so there are the additional readings. So with five sheets, uh, the additional readings are 2175, 2155, and 2100. All right, along with the original readings of 2172 and 2160. So now our next condition we want to look at is 10 sheets of aluminum foil. So for the uh, two sheets and the five sheets, you should go ahead and calculate an average of the five readings that we have. And for 10 sheets, our first reading is 1844. If you've already watched the video on determining background, once you have the average, you can also subtract the background reading so that you can determine how much of that average is due just to the source and not from the background. You want to know what the average reading is due just to the source. These are now for 10 sheets, so let's take down the five sheet numbers. 1844 for the first one. And 1895 for the second one. For 10 sheets, here are the three additional readings, 1824, 1879, and 1803. So the last two numbers were the 1895 and the 1844, making up the five readings for 10 sheets. 
All right, so now we want to go to 15 sheets, and we don't have one that's 15, so we're going to add a 5 to the 10 for a total of 15 sheets, and reset our counter. So we're almost before we get the first one. Have all the readings for 10 sheets down. So now it's 15 sheets. Our first reading is 1593. And the second one is coming up in just a moment. All right, so the second live reading with 15 sheets of aluminum foil is 1654, with the additional readings of 1562, 1647, and 1605. And our last condition that we want to look at is 20 sheets. So I'm going to add five more sheets of aluminum foil. And the reset button. So our total readings for 15 sheets at 0.03 millimeters each uh, were 1593, 1654, 1562, 1647, and 1605. All right, so we need two more live readings. All right. For 20 sheets. The first one should be coming up momentarily here. So let's take these down. For all the First four conditions, two sheets, five sheets, 10 sheets, and 15 sheets. You can go ahead and be counting, calculating the averages. So we have 1579 uh, for 20 sheets. Here are three other readings while you can be writing down while we're waiting for our last live reading. And 1470 is our last live reading. All right, so with that, we can uh, 
take a look at the calculations that are going to be required. So now that we have all of the data for the different amounts of radiation that is making it through different thicknesses of aluminum, you might ask yourself, what are we going to do with it? Well, our mission is to figure out how much aluminum foil or how many thicknesses of aluminum foil it would take to stop all of the radiation. When we had two sheets, we had around 25 to 2600 uh, counts per minute. And when we added 20 sheets, it went down to around uh, 14 to 1500 counts per minute. So even with 20 sheets, it didn't block all of the radiation. So we want to know how much would it take to block all the radiation. So we're going to make a graph where we're going to take the counts per minute and subtract the background reading and then take the natural log of that for each number of sheets and graph that versus the thickness of metal. Now, not the number of sheets, but the actual thickness in millimeters. So you need to convert the sheets to millimeters before you make the graph. And then you're going to get five different points that are going to be not in a perfect line like it shows here, but they should all trend in the same general direction. So then you're going to, using your electronic graph, Excel or some similar software, figure out what the best fit line is. In Excel, you simply right click on one of the data points and ask it to add a trend line and give you the equation of the line on the graph. And it'll give it to you in a Y equals MX plus B format where B is the slope of the line. Uh, so what we wanna do is assume that this line goes all the way to the X intercept, often you are worried about the y-intercept. In this case, we want the x-intercept because that would tell us the thickness in uh, millimeters of metal, in this case aluminum, when the radiation went to zero. So that's what we want to solve for, is how many millimeters of aluminum it would take to block all of the radiation. And I realize this is going to tell us the amount of aluminum that would take to block beta rays from st this strontium-90 disk. It's not the same for every form of beta radiation. Uh, different isotopes give off beta rays of different energies. So this is not something you can just uniformly apply to all forms of beta radiation. Okay. So uh, this x-intercept is what you want to solve for. Thanks and good luck with your calculations.